In the recent years, Indian cinema has been thriving ahead. From an Indian film going viral internationally to participating in prestigious film festivals around the globe, not just getting nominated but even winning multiple Oscars. Today, the reach for our cinema is multifold. We are reaching new heights with our box office revenues, and it feels like maybe we are on a path to the boom, just like what Korean cinema had. Let's talk. Hello, guys. I'm Nona Prince, and I have been making videos about Indian cinema for almost seven years now. And and in that time frame how far we have come it just makes me proud from rrr going viral all around the globe goes as far to win golden globe and as well as an oscar for an original song who would have even thought about it and not just that multiple films getting nominated in different categories we had a nomination in best documentary with all that breathes and then we won another oscar for an indian produced short documentary elephant whispers 2023 was the best ever year of indian cinema at the box office we had multiple films cross crossing 1000 crores, creating new benchmarks. That just shows the untapped potential we have with the film industry. And talking about film festivals, let's talk about Cannes this year, where Indian cinema really dominated. If you don't know, Cannes Film Festival that happens in France every year is the most prestigious film festival in the world. Why? Because unlike Oscars, where more popular films get noticed, Cannes Film Festival is all about the merit. The films which come there are the best of the best. It's literally the cream. It's a platform that rewards the art over entertainment. Now, most of us would know Khans because of all of these actors who go there on the red carpet in their fashionable clothes and make headlines, be it the influencers or the Bollywood actors, sorry, not actors, models, who are actually very happy and proud to have made it to Khans just to walk in their clothes. But the real big deal is our films making it there in different categories and making a mark. It's a big deal that not only we were nominated in the main category, and over that winning it, it was really special because after 30 years, an Indian film was competing in the main competition. Payal Kapadia's All That We Imagine as Light. And they were not just nominated, but they also won the second most prestigious award, the Grand Prix. It's not called Prix, it's called Pre. French. And this film is also special because people from different industries came together for it. It's the women leading from the front. The director Payal Kapadia, who has already won an award at Cannes two years ago with a documentary film. She is from FDI Pune. And the cast includes two Malayalis, Kani Kusruti and Divya Prabhu, with the Hindi and Marathi actor Chaya Kadam. We all have seen their performances before. So it's kind of a pan Indian indie film. And I have just heard raving reviews about the film. Look at their presence at the function. The way they walked the red carpet. Sorry, not walk, but they danced along the carpet, flaunting their traditional attire, getting an eight minute long standing ovation after the screening, and then donning the beautiful saris to receive the award. That's how you make a mark. And during the interviews, they even talked about Malayalam cinema and how maybe Kerala is the only place where this film will get a big distribution. Also, considering the stories about two Malayali nurses working in Mumbai, they have made all of us proud, and I cannot wait to watch the film. But that's not it. We also won the Best Short Film Award for the film Sunflowers for the first ones to know. It is based on the folklore from Karnataka. And getting to know from the director Chidananda Nayak that they only shot this film in four days, it's a big achievement. And there is more. More than the Bollywood actors just walking the red carpet, there was one more Indian actor who made a mark. The actor who deserved to walk, Anasuya Sen Gupta, who became the first Indian actor to win the Best Actress Award. She won it for her role in the film called The Shameless, made by a Bulgarian filmmaker. All these films and people, you know, will not be in the mainstream. Many of us would not know their name or work, but still it's a big achievement taking Indian cinema ahead. They're elevating the craft of storytelling. But I also want to talk about what is mainstream but still it's not talked about in that regard what telugu cinema has been doing and how it has been taking indian cinema to the next level they've literally shown us the way to dream big the phenomena of pan india film started from a telugu film daring to dream big bahubali 1 just opened the gates of what is possible in indian cinema and then bahubali 2 went on to becoming the highest grossing indian film ever grossing over 2500 crores it just opened 
different markets around the globe for Indian cinema. Then RRR took it to the next level. We even brought an Oscar home for a feature film, that too for an original song, which is so much part of our culture in films. And now, Telugu cinema is giving us the biggest science fiction film made in the country. And we have known about Kalki 2 at 10 AD for a while now. The film is delayed so many times. Yes, it's gonna be a big science fiction, VFX heavy film. Prabhas in the lead, we have Amitabh Bachchan, Kamal Hassan, Deepika Padukun. Such a big star cast. But the most surprising thing that they did, they freaking created a vehicle. Sorry, a working vehicle. Which is not just a replica of another car, but they created it from scratch with its own unique design. They literally engineered it. For what? Just for a movie. A freaking movie. I still cannot believe that in Indian cinema we have reached that stage that we can pull off something like this. It all feels like a dream. That's what it was. You know, looking at the West, looking at Hollywood, the things they have done over years, how they have taken filmmaking so seriously, how they have invented technology to help them aid in filmmaking. We have always borrowed that knowledge from them. I know that's something Rana Dugapati had said once, that in the West, filmmaking and science had a marriage, that they were working together to create something new, which hasn't happened in India. And one of the biggest reasons for that is who would invest? It's expensive. Who will put in the money for it? Leave that aside for a minute. Do we even have a story, a world to build where we can have these things? There was a lack of opportunity to even think of reaching there. But that's not the case anymore. It's one thing to create and design your world through VFX, through CGI. And Indian cinema has been doing that for some time now. Brahmaster is a big example for that. They created their own assets from scratch. But this, Bujji, is something else. It's a dream coming true. It is the next step in Indian filmmaking. We need to be evolving not just in storytelling, but also with our technology, our finances. You need all of it for that growth, to make this craft accessible to more people. Because at the end of the day, these are all tools to tell your story more convincingly. It's about the stories to be told. It's about the filmmaking process. It's about the scale, the boundless imagination you can have. Everything that makes you alive. Because that's what cinema is. And what I'm seeing today, we are growing more and more in that direction. I don't know what's next, what the future holds for us, but I am bloody damn excited for it. What do you think? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't seen this video, definitely check it out and I will see you next time.